Okay. Bang, bang, bang. Gain fire superiority. Bang, bang. Hey, can you hear me? I Crawl hear towards you. us. Crawl towards us. Can you? I'm stuck. Okay, we're going to come help you. Security team forward. Apply self aid if you can. I can't reach my. We're on our way. Bang, bang, bang. When security team calls me, I run forward. Okay, I don't see any extremity hemorrhaging except on one arm. Turning it until the bleeding stops. Okay, we're gonna get you to safety. Okay. Okay, you're responsive, that means your airway's patent. Um, if you weren't responsive, I'd check your carotid pulse. If you had no carotid pulse and you were responsive, I would decide what to do based on the tactical situation. Because you're responsive, I'm gonna do a quick blood sweep. Okay. Not because you're responsive. I would do a tactical uh, quick blood sweep anyway. Okay, I found no additional bleeding. If I had, I would apply deliberate tourniquets to any new bleeding I found. Um, I'm gonna convert this tourniquet. Okay, I'm, not, I'm gonna convert it uh, later, so. Okay, so you're talking to me so you have a patent airway. Um, if your breathing rate's fine, I don't need to do anything. If you were unconscious or having any difficulty, I would size an NPA and uh, place the NPA, uh, bevel towards the septum, lube it, insert it, tape it down, possibly all the way around the head if the head was sweaty or bloody in any way. Um, if you were unconscious, I would do a head tilt chin lift um, and I would position you in a position to maintain your airway once I was done. Open the chest, look for equal rise and fall of the chest, look for any penetrating trauma. If I find penetrating trauma, I'm going to roll you over and look for exit wounds. If I don't see any penetrating, if I do see penetrating trauma, I will take an occlusive dressing, apply an occlusive dressing on exhale. And then check for penetrating uh, uh, exit wound again and do the same thing on an exit wound if I find one. Um, if I don't find that, or if I do find that, I would monitor you for rest, uh, signs of progressive respiratory distress, possibly using a needle chest decompression if you do show signs of uh, progressive respiratory distress. Since I don't see any wounds there, I'm gonna check uh, the structure of your shoulders, sternum, ribs, and axilla. Um, everything looks good there. We're gonna close you up. And if you have any additional wounds, I'm gonna position you um, in a position of your most comfort for breathing and wounds. Okay, so um, now I'm going to convert this. I would cut away any uniform or clothing that was in the way. I'm going to have to lean over you, sorry. Okay, um, I'm going two inches above the wound. You can put your arm down. Two inches above the wound but not on a joint, and I can't do that. There's not enough room to go below the joint and to be two inches above, so I'm going above the joint. I'm wrapping all the way around. I'm gonna tighten this until the bleeding stops. I'm gonna tape it down. I'm gonna loosen the hasty. I'm gonna put a T on your forehead. Note the time. And I'm going to check for a distal pulse. If you still have a distal pulse, I'll continue tightening until the distal pulse goes away. 
Since the distal pulse has gone there, I'm just checking this hand. I feel a distal pulse. Because you're conscious, you have significant trauma and you don't have AMS, I'm gonna give you a saline lock. For a saline lock, um, I'm just gonna prep my equipment, uh, put it on BSI, find the vein I wanna use. Uh, well, actually, I'll put the rubber band on, find the vein I wanna use, clean it, apply tension, uh, inject, push the catheter forward, apply occlusion, apply pressure there, pull the rubber band, sharps, put it in the sharps, thread on the saline lock, tape it down with a piece of one inch tape, clean it if there's any blood or sweat, put a piece of tegaderm over it, and now I'm ready to give you any meds or fluids if necessary. If you showed signs of AMS or no distal pulses, I would start you with 500 mil of hex stand. I would turn the hex stand off once your radial pulse is returned. Um, so I'm gonna reassess any packing in any junctional wounds. We have not packed any junctional wounds, um, so I would not, don't have to reassess them and I don't have to wrap them. So um, we're gonna call for a medevac. Uh, you're not able to fight at this point, is that correct? No. If, if you're not able to fight, we're gonna get you out of here. So team leader, I need a medevac. Line three, Charlie one. Line four, Alpha. Line five, Alpha one. You can still walk, right? Can you walk now? Um, yeah, I should be able to. Okay. Um, I'm gonna reassess HABCs. So you're still breathing, right? Yeah. Okay, you can talk to me. Um, looking at my uh, interventions, I'm looking for Ill infiltration at the saline lock. I'm checking for a distal pulse where I apply the tourniquet. There is no distal pulse where I apply the tourniquet, and there are no other wounds to check. Um, now I'm gonna go ahead into my secondary assessment. I'm gonna check um, your skull for decap. Oh. Um, you're in a lot of pain. I uh, can give you some. Uh, do you have any allergies? Uh, just uh, poison ivy. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead, uh, since you're not able to fight, I'll give you 5 milligrams of morphine, and if you're still in pain, in 10 minutes I can continue giving you morphine. If you're allergic to morphine, I give you uh, 20 milligrams of ketamine instead of 5 milligrams of morphine with about the same rate. It's a reapply every 5 to 10 minutes PRN, slow push over 1 to 2 minutes. So I clean the saline lock, prep it, clean the saline lock, and inject through the saline port, slow push over one to two minutes. Now I'm gonna start my secondary assessment. I'm checking the integrity of the skull, the facial bones, jaw, looking for DCAT BLS and tick, which is deformities, contusions, abrasions, burns, no, punctures, burns, lacerations, swelling, tick is tenderness, instability, and crepitus. Um, I'm gonna shine a light in your eyes just a little bit. The pupil constricted. Pupil constricted. The pupils are equal, uh, reactive to light and round. Looking for CSF or anything coming out of the ears. Checking the nose for CSF or anything. Checking the mouth for blood, fluids, broken teeth. Everything looks good. Checking the neck for DCAP, BLS, and tick. Checking the trachea for tracheal de deviation, looking at the jugular veins for distension, looking at the chest again, checking for DCAT BLS in the shoulders, rib cage, sternum. Auscultating the lungs, inhale, apex. Inhale, apex, inhale, base, inhale, base. Listening for uh, any improper lung sounds, presence of lung sounds, um, checking the abdomen, top right quadrant, uh, decap BLS and turd, which is tenderness, rigidity, and distension. Upper left quadrant, lower right quadrant, lower left quadrant. Checking the perineum, checking for a pria prism.
checking the pelvis, rocking and rolling it. Again, for DCAP, BMS, and TIC on all these secondary assessments. Checking the long bones, DCAP, BLS. Checking for dorsalis pedis pulse. Can you wiggle your toes for me? Can you tell me which toe I'm touching? My big toe, right foot. Which toe am I touching? My left foot, little toe. Okay, can you wiggle your toes for me? Okay, okay good. Okay, I'm checking the long bones for DCAP BLS. Holy shit. Tick. Oh my god. Yes. <laughs> this is happening. I'm checking the upper extremities for DCAP BLS. Checking the pulse again. <laughs> Present. Can you tell me which finger I'm touching? My thumb. Okay, can you wiggle your fingers for me? And I'm not assessing that arm because of the uh, pressure dressing but I will attempt to pack it now, or I would attempt to pack it, and... Holy shit! Did I loosen this one? I think, yeah, I loosened that one. Um, and I got the T on the forehead. So, um, if I pack that wound and hold pressure on it for three minutes and the bleeding stops, I can loosen up that tourniquet and um, check the pulse again and check CSMs on that hand and it should return, hopefully. Um, so now I'm going to call for litter. Litter? Just go through. Just go through. Okay, I'm going to call for a litter. Video. We're getting shit faced. You guys stop. Hey, litter. Put this on the litter, silver side up. Help me out. Thanks. We're getting shit faced. Checking the back, looking down at the spine under the vest, under the vest, feeling for DCAP BLS. You don't have to do that. It's simulated because I don't have a litter. Um, checking the um, rectum for bleeding or fecal matter. And then uh, now we got the litter up here. Okay, litter man, thank you. Uh, we're going to roll the litter down on three. Three, two, one. Rolling down. Cover up with the blanket uh, to prevent hypothermia. Um, even if it's warm outside, I'm still going to cover up with the blanket. There's potential loss of blood, so they might be feeling the, the patient might be feeling a lot colder than we are. Um, because I have a tourniquet here, if I still have a tourniquet, I'm going to have that arm out. Because I have a sailing lock here, I'm going to leave that arm out. If I've converted it to a pressure dressing and packing, I'm actually going to fold it under the blanket. Put it all under the blanket and I'm going to continue monitoring for hypothermia and, and patient's comfort uh, temperature-wise. Um, I'm going to reassess, so reassessing the saline lock for infiltration, reassessing for pulse. Uh, if there's a tourniquet, there should be. If there isn't, there should be. Um, reassessing the patient in general. I'm going to do my ample and my um, vitals. Do you, we already asked about allergies. Are you taking any medication or should you be taking any medication? That's what you gave me. Okay. Okay. Okay, I gave you five milligrams morphine at 20.55. You have a gunshot wound to your left arm. Your uh, blood pressure is 80 plus because I feel it in the, um, I feel the radio pulses, so I know that your blood pressure is at least 80, so I don't have to give you Hexen. Um, Socks on you. The, your pulse is reading 70. Your pulse ox is reading 95. Um, I'm going to count your respirations.
over 15 seconds. I got five, so that's respirations of 20. Um, uh, what would you say you're allergic to? Is it food? I can't okay, poison ivy. Okay, oh no. Poison ivy. Medications, you said none? Mm -hmm. None of the morphine I gave. How's your pain doing now? Ah, uh, much better. Okay. Um, when's the last time you ate something? Just that morphine you gave me. When's the last time you ate something? Oh, MRE for lunch. Okay. And uh, we know that you got shot, um, and events leading up to that are irrelevant. Um, okay, so you got your vitals, we got that. Um, you move through. This is awesome. <laughs> um, Okay, if medevac is more than three hours, I'm gonna give you some antibiotics because you have trauma. Um, so if it was less than three hours, I would not give you any. Since, let's assume it is gonna be uh, three hours, I can give you Mobit by mouth since you're conscious, 400 milligrams. If you were unconscious, I would consider giving you Ertapenem, one gram once a day, slow push through the saline, or uh, Cicotetin, two grams, slow push over three to five minutes twice a day. Um, but I should need it to give it a second time because it should be medevac well before that happens. Um, and then I'm gonna secure you to the stretcher at this point and continue reassessing and reassuring you until the uh, medevac shows up. And that's it. Thank you.